Hi, my name is Roy Hall. I'm the owner, president, whatever, of Music Hall. Uh, we're importers of high-end audio equipment, and uh, including turntables. And this video is an exclusive video for Audio Advisor, in which I am hopefully going to set up a MMF 5.1 turntable. This turntable is pretty in similar to all the turntables we have in the range. So with a few slight modifications, this, uh, these instructions will work for our 7, 7.1, our 9, 9.1, and even our 2.2, which is a slightly smaller version. There's a couple of differences there. Uh, the first thing you want to do when you set up a turntable is to, of course, take it out and get all the parts together. These are most of the parts you need to assemble the turntable. Uh, you have the power supply, which I show comes in this plain white box. It's just sometimes people call up and say, where's the power supply? It's in the white box at the bottom of the packing material. Uh, this is the belt, of course. Uh, this is a record clamp that comes with the table. You use that obviously after the record's been put on. The counterweight, which you will see. Uh, the interconnect that plugs into the table that then goes to your phono amp. The anti-skate weight, which always comes in a little plastic bag saying anti-skating weight. Uh, and this weird and wonderful little tool, which is actually for changing the belt from 33 to 45 without touching the rubber. Some people don't like to put their fingers on the rubber in case they get some grease on it, so you actually loop it over and you drop it down or drop it up. Before you start doing the real setup of the turntable, the first thing to do after you've put the feet on is to plug in the power supply. This goes in at the rear and if you lift the turntable up, you will see a little socket for the power supply. You just plug it in very, very simply. That's the power supply plugged in to it. The next step is to put on the interconnects that will plug into your phono amp. And what you do is you have your ground post here and you just loop it over and tighten it. Just tighten that down and of course the red excuse me the red socket goes, the red plug goes into the red socket, like so, and the black uh, socket goes into, the black plug goes into the black socket. The turntable comes with a spirit level built in. This is so you can level your turntable. The feet are adjustable, so it's relatively simple. It has three feet on it, so it's relatively simple to adjust it. In this case, uh, you just Turn, you lift the turntable slightly and you adjust the feet, you just uh, screw them up or down uh, at the back or the sides. If it's too much, if it's pointing too much this way, if the, the bubble is too much this way, you'll raise this foot up. If it's too much that way, the opposite. Or if it's, to the, if it's tilting to the back, you'll raise it at the back. So basically all I'm doing, without even lifting the turntable, you can't really see this, but I'm just turning the foot until the bubble is in the center of the hole. You then get a screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, and you remove the three packing screws, or transport screws, really. Uh, it's a very simple process. These, these just hold the two platforms together during, uh, during shipping. The next step is to attach the drive belt to the turntable. The easiest way to do this is to put it on the top uh, loop on the pulley, put it round the subplatter, and then walk it with your finger holding it down and there you have the belt attached. Very very simple procedure. Okay to put the platter on just place it over the subplatter uh, and allow the spindle to poke through the hole there. On the 5.1, this is dynamically balanced uh, alloy platter, which gives a nice flywheel effect when it's spinning. Okay. The next step is really the setting up of the arm, and this is the, the step that seems to confuse people the most, so I'll try and make it as simple as possible. First thing you want to do is take off any uh, ties that are holding the arm in its position. So 
Okay, the next step is to put the counterweight on the arm. And this is done by taking the counterweight uh, with the numbers facing forward, never this way, only this way, numbers towards you, and just putting it on the back of the arm and turning it, I guess, clockwise from the back and just screwing it on. Don't worry, you're just screwing it on uh, at this point just to position it on the arm. You then remove, if there is one, a d the dust cover uh, or the cartridge cover and just just take that off and then what we're going to do is we're going to balance the arm and the way to think of this is, is somewhat like a seesaw when you have a seesaw and no one's sitting on it the arm can the, the seesaw floats uh, if someone sits on a seesaw of course one end goes down the other end goes up so you want to get this balancing act so the the arm just kind of floats doesn't go down like it, it does just now or uh, up like that so what you do is you hold it with your index finger and your thumb of your left hand and you just sort of turn the counterweight and you let go from time to time you, you position the arm between the rest and the platter and you just sort of play with it if it's going down you you turn the counterweight back that's too much so you just go forward again slightly too much and that's it it's just kind of just floating around moving side to side but not really going up or down when you've achieved that what you do is you then put it back in the armrest now this is very important as you positioned the counterweight you don't want it to move just yet so what you do is with your right hand you hold the back of the counterweight so it does not move and with your left hand you spin this dial until the number zero is pointing upwards now the number zero could be anywhere depending on where you started it doesn't matter so you just keep turning it until the number zero is pointing straight up. You then make sure before you go further you make sure that the arm lift mechanism is down. That's very important so it doesn't put any force on the arm itself. So this is down, the cover is off and what you're going to do is you're going to set this gauge to 17 or 1.7 grams actually. That's the standard weight we've found best for the cartridges we supply with the turntable. And how you're going to do this is you're going to turn the counterweight but the counterweight that you do not touch the dial anymore. The dial will spin with the counterweight as you turn it. So it's at zero just now. You start turning it and you go through five, through ten, through fifteen, and then you go to the seventeen position. And that's pretty much it. That is the arm setup. That's all. So when you when you put it down on a record it will slowly go down and it's going to track at the correct weight. The final step is uh, putting on the anti-skate weight. To put the anti-skate weight on uh, it's kind of fiddly. It's annoying because the anti-skate weight is a little weight with a fishing ring on, a fishing line on it, small fishing line, and it has a loop on it. And what you do is you put it on, there's a little rod, the anti-skate rod sticks out of the back of the turntable pointing towards the counterweight, and it has three grooves on it. So you put it on, you put it on the, as I said, this is fiddly, you put it on the anti-skate rod, and then you move it to the middle position and then you hang the wire over the little arm on the right so it hangs free. Okay, the final step after you've put on the counterweight and the anti skate weight is to raise the arm again and then switch on the turntable. On this model the on off switch is underneath. Of course put a record on and then you position the arm over the record and you just lower the arm mechanism and voila we have music. This has been Roy Hall for Music Hall demonstrating the uh, setup of a Music Hall 5.1 turntable an exclusive video for Audio Advisor. <laughs>